Am I the a-hole for no longer bringing dinner for my wife after she claimed I never cook? I work at a nice restaurant as a cook, and every day when I get off from work, I always cook dinner for my wife and our two kids, eight male and six female, at the restaurant before coming home. The only time I don't cook for them are on weekends when I'm off, and that's when my wife does the cooking. We usually trade off who makes breakfast and lunch for the kids every other day, but for the weekdays, I'm always the one bringing home dinner. Weekends, we sometimes get together with friends and they come over to the house. My wife usually cooks and I help set the table slash clean afterwards. One of her friends, Stacy, asks how come I never do any of the cooking, and is it always on my wife all the time making meals for the kids, especially when I'm a cook myself? Instead of correcting her, she sort of laughed and went along with it making jokes about, you know how it is. And Stacy laughed because her ex-husband was the same way, and then sort of ripped on me in a joking way how I better buck up before I become an ex too. My wife just said, well, let's see if he actually listens and starts cooking for once. Joking about all the time I spent at the kitchen at work but won't do the same at home. It really pissed me off. I'm not the husband that just doesn't do anything after I'm home from work. I cook food for her and the kids at work and on top of that I make separate dishes for each of them, which ones and what the kids want. All that after standing on my feet all day. We talked about it once they left because I don't appreciate being told I'm not doing something she knows for a fact I do. She didn't want to apologize for it because it was all just to be a funny joke. Even after telling her about how it hurt my feelings being put down like that. My wife said she felt like she has to go along with the joke so there wouldn't be any awkward vibes, whatever that means. But I said fine, if she can't apologize for something that was meant just so she could laugh along with her friends, then I won't keep doing something she already claims I don't do. For the past week, I've only bought home dinner for our kids, and she's had to make her own food. She's mad that I'm refusing to feed her over what happened instead of letting it go. But I can't help but feel mad about being made fun of like that, when I'm busting my butt to provide for my family and still making sure they have food on the table every evening. She just thinks I'm an a-hole for how I'm reacting when she's already tired at the end of the day but still have to make food for herself. Am I the a-hole? Now for the top comments. Not day home. Your wife missed a great opportunity to boast on you. All for acceptance by others who have nothing invested in your relationship. Not even to boast, it would have felt nice though. But at least say, hey, you're wrong. Not just go along with it. As a stay-at-home mom who has a significant other who actually does things for himself and around the house, I've basically had this conversation before. All she had to say is, actually, I don't have that problem. He's a responsible adult and pulls his share. I don't get why she had to lie to keep it from being awkward. I'm sure it was awkward already. Not day home. Your spouse is supposed to be your partner in everything in life. The person who always has your back like you always have theirs. She threw you directly under the bus for the sake of not creating waves with her friend. Then when you told her you didn't find her comments at all funny, and quite hurtful that she let someone else believe you're a deadbeat, she blew you off. So, she can make her own dinner until she sincerely apologizes and acknowledges that your contribution to the family of cooking dinner during the week is important. Not day home. My wife said she felt like she has to go along with the joke so there wouldn't be any awkward vibes, whatever that means. Your wife would rather hurt your feelings than cause awkward vibes with her friends? Ouch. Ouch. Your response could be construed as petty potentially, but she made her own bed, and now she can lie on it. Not today, Hello B. Yep, she thought it's better to insult you, so she went along with the joke. Nice to know where her priorities are. Not today, home. It's been a week, and she still refuses to apologize? Still cooking for the kids was a good idea. No. Yeah, I won't let my kids starve. They don't have anything to do with us. Next story. Am I the a-hole for refusing to teach my best friend's girlfriend to cook and banning her from our kitchen? I, 26 male, live with my best friend, Brian, 26 male, in a rented house. Sometime in September, Brian started dating Cindy, female, 24. Brian can't cook. At all. He can make scrambled eggs, instant ramen, frozen pizza, and that's about it. He doesn't even know how to cook rice. I, on the other hand, am a great cook, and I occasionally, three to five times a month, cook for him as well. Cindy has been staying over more and more often, and a few weeks ago she was sleeping over on the same day I cooked for Brian. 
She was apparently really shocked I cooked it because it tastes like it's from a pricey restaurant. Brian made a mistake of mentioning that I offered to teach him to cook. Cindy decided that this offer automatically extends to her as well. So she came to me and told me I could teach her. She didn't ask. She just told me. I told her I wouldn't. We went back and forth and she thinks I have to because I promised Brian I'd teach him. But he doesn't want to. Cindy also doesn't know how to cook anything. She thinks she's entitled to cooking lessons because she is dating my friend. She kept pestering me about this for almost three freaking weeks. It only stopped when I asked Brian to talk to her. Now, last week I got home and could immediately smell burnt food. I walked into the kitchen and there she was. She tried to make crepes, burned them to a crisp and was scraping them with metal spatula on a nonstick pancake pan. I slightly lost it. It immediately raised my voice to ask her what the heck she was doing. She gave me an attitude about how since I'm an a-hole, she's learning to cook by herself. I told her she can do that at her home but not in our kitchen. She smugly told me it's not my decision to make because it's Brian's place as well. I told her it is my decision because everything in the kitchen is mine. When we moved in, the kitchen was empty apart from a single banged up pan, one pot and three dull knives with crappy plastic candles. The kitchen is now chef worthy. I dropped hundreds on appliances, cookware, nice dinnerware, etc. Brian is of course allowed to use everything in the kitchen. I told Cindy that she is not allowed to cook anything in our kitchen. Brian came into the kitchen at this point and diffused the argument. That was last week. Things between Brian and me are very awkward. Cindy has not been over since. One of my friends absolutely went off on me, calling me sexist and classist because not everyone has the same opportunities. Side note, I grew up poor and I learned to cook on my own. I learned how to make great tasting meals out of ramen, hot dogs, rice, whatever was on a clearance, etc. I don't think I am the a-hall for refusing to teach, but I am wondering if banning her from the kitchen was a step too far. It's just that I really don't like her. I honestly don't trust her not to damage something on purpose. Edit. The pan is fine. The coal that was supposed to become crepes protected the actual pan. Not the a-hall. You said no and she should have stopped asking after that. Cindy sounds like an entitled a-hole. The metal spatula on a nonstick pan is utterly criminal. She's better off drinking the batter mix if she wants pancakes. Not stay home. She acted entitled and ruined items that belong to you because she wouldn't take no for an answer. And I honestly do not understand how telling someone you don't want to teach them to cook and not use your cookware is either sexist or classist. My friend grew up middle class and seems to think poor people cannot cook because they can't afford it. True for families permanently living in, let's say, motels, where they don't have access to a kitchen. But personally, I think poor people are more likely to know how to cook. As a kid, we could never afford takeout and to go out to eat, so we cooked whatever we had. Not stay home. You do not mess with someone's cooking stuff. Just got a new set of Yakushi knives that I'm obsessed with. If someone was using them without my permission and using them incorrectly, I would flip my lid. Especially if they were acting as entitled as a girlfriend. Absolutely not an a-hole. However, if you feel like sharing some sweet appliances you have that I need in my kitchen, I'm all ears. Lol. If I had Yakushi knives in my kitchen, I would never get anything done because I would be too busy worshipping them. Unfortunately, money is tight due to COVID, so that will remain a dream for me for now. Not gonna say the specific model as I am not sure they are making them anymore and I bought it in Europe a few years ago. But I think everyone should have a hand blender with accessories. Mine came not only with different heads, but also with two containers, where you plug the blender on top and you can change the blades and they will either blend, chop, grate, slice, or mix bread dough. I much prefer it over a traditional food processor or a blender. Next story is titled... Am I the a-hole for hiding embarrassing notes in my house as a joke? Because I know my fiancé's mom snoops. I bought a house seven years ago and I met my fiancé Al four years ago. This year he moved in. We're talking about making it a home for both of us. But as of now, he hasn't moved much stuff in. Right now, 95% of the stuff and furniture in the house is mine. When his mom comes over, she's kind of a snoop. He was used to that. But when she comes to our house, it's so uncomfortable because she's just going through my things. 
When I'm bothered, she's like, I was just helping with chores, etc. He says I should just let her because she has a lot of nervous energy. One thing she snooped on was actually embarrassing. In my home office, I had a little affirmation post-it note on my monitor saying, I'm smart, I'm skilled, I'm deserving of great things. It was a silly thing my therapist recommended to get me in a confident mindset before an interview. Anyway, she made a comment too about my ego. But as a joke, I decided to do it again. I had my best friend over and we got wine drunk and wrote a bunch of affirmations to hide. Some were medicine cabinet, my teeth will regrow, I am shark-like and powerful, kitchen drawers, I know when to spoon but I also know when to fork, I am sexy and self-assured, work desk, I will not just sleep my way to the top of the company, I will sleep my way to the top of the world, walk-in closet, I am beautiful with clothes and without, especially without, my boobs are legendary, there were a bunch more and my friend and I had a hilarious time writing them. Next time my mother-in-law came over, she saw a few. And she didn't acknowledge them to me even though she definitely started acting a little weird about me. I went to run some errands and when I was out, she confronted Al about the notes and was trying to tell him that I seemed unstable, egotistical, and moving in was a bad idea. She showed him the notes and he didn't really know what to make of it. So he asked me and I said that they were just some silly private notes to boost my self-confidence and make myself laugh. How had she gotten them? Had she been going through my things? He said she was just tidying and saw them, and they were really weird. I was like, have you met me? You should know how weird I am. Anyway, if you don't want your mom seeing my weird crap, you've got to stop letting her go through my things. He asked if I left them on purpose to annoy her, and I admitted that was kind of the joke. But I also have other weird or private stuff. So what I said about her needing to stop snooping if she didn't want to find weird crap was still for real. He said I was making stuff hard for him. His mom was really protective and adjusting to him moving in with a girlfriend for the first time. And I was agitating her on purpose and making her think I wouldn't be a good partner when he wanted her to have the opposite impression of me. Am I the a-hole for the note prank? Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. She's snooping through your home. But I have gone further and left little notes like Nobody likes a snoop. And... You aren't welcome to go through my things. But yours were pretty damn funny. It's a red flag if your fiancé stands up for her invading your privacy like this. Haha, <laughs> I was thinking a set of butt plugs increasing in size to the absurd would be pretty funny. But pointed notes could be too. Yeah, I feel so frustrated because he was okay with her doing it in his apartment. Because she actually would help with laundry and dishes and he appreciated that. But in my house, it's different. Because it's not his stuff there. It's not even our stuff. It's 95% my stuff because I've lived there for 7 years and furnished it and bought everything. Andy moved in after selling his furniture and only bringing a closet full of things and some gadgets. So when she's going through the house, it's not his stuff or even shared stuff. She's just going through my things. And I'm not really cool with that. Because I don't want my guests helping with my laundry or looking for my dirty mugs. I think on the not funny side of things, I might just sit her down and say I've lived alone for six years. I live in a way that makes my home feel like a home. And part of that is not keeping anything but the living room and guest bathroom presentable for guests. So I'm uncomfortable with her as my guest going into the other rooms without asking or looking at my stuff. Not stay home. Don't ask Al's mom to stop going through your things. Tell her she is not allowed to go through your things. Ever. If that doesn't sit well, maybe she won't come over anymore. Either way, you win. Walk-in closet. I'm beautiful with clothes and without. Especially without. My boobs are legendary. The kind of energy I needed today. Not stay home. Also, it's really creepy Al's mom is looking through all your stuff. And then Al saying it's just what she does. Like, what is she looking for? Why does it not bother him that his mother is finding stuff in his fiancé's house? And then telling him about it all shocked and disturbed as if what she's doing is any less shocking and disturbing. Now for the last story. Am I the a-hole for saying if we had our second child first, we probably wouldn't have had another? My wife and I have two kids. Oldest Penelope is almost four, youngest Brianna will be three in June. Penelope was really a dream baby. I got laid off around the time she was born, so I ended up a stay-at-home dad. 
She would sleep a lot, was generally happy, and from a young age, pretty independent. If I needed to do chores, I could leave her in her pack and play, or on an activity mat with some toys and she'd be entertained. She was sleeping through the night by three months. I knew this was a rare experience, but it did make us want to try again fairly quickly. Even now at four, she's had her moments and we expect tantrums, but overall she's a well-behaved child. Brianna has challenged us from day one, and none of it has been her fault, of course. She was colicky and those first few months were hell. She also ended up with a nipple aversion, and it took months and several doctors to find a bottle that worked for her. She needed to be held constantly. We had taken several trips with Penelope and she did great, while Brianna could not cope long in the car. As a toddler, she has been equally as challenging. Massive tantrums, aggression, etc. Way more than an average toddler. We're working on having her evaluated, but due to the pandemic, everything is being pushed back. I ended up going back to work last year and we hired a nanny. We've had to quit due to our youngest being too much to handle. We ended up putting Penelope in preschool so we could get a new nanny that specialized in special needs children for Brianna, and so far she's helped a ton. But we still struggle day to day. It's tested our marriage, and we're both in therapy separately and as a couple. In couples therapy, I admitted that I didn't want more kids, and my wife agreed. I then said, if we had Brianna first, I feel like we never would have had Penelope. My wife got mad and said that was an awful thing to say. I asked her why. We struggled being all Brianna needs as it is. She is probably a kid who would do better as an only child. And given how much attention Brianna needs, Penelope deserves a home where life isn't so chaotic. I understand we can't go back, but I'm just sharing my thoughts. The therapist said it's healthy to share these things. My wife is still mad and says it was a nasty thing to say. I never say it to either child, so is there any harm? Am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole. You'd be an a-hole if you said this to Brianna, but you said it in the presence of your wife and therapist. You should be able to be honest with your feelings in such company. Honestly, the wife is probably thinking the exact same thing, and is feeling guilty as hell about it and is lashing out at him for giving voice to her shame. Not the a-hole. It was therapy where you're allowed to say stuff like that. Also, don't feel bad. Penelope was a trick baby. Lots of people get them. They trick you into having another one. Brianna will be fine in the long run, and so will you and your family. Just keep on walking. Exactly what happened to my parents. My sister was a dream. Brother was good as long as he was fed. Then they had me. I've been told if I were first, I'd be an only child. Not today home. Honestly, it's important to say that stuff out loud in therapy. Then you can both acknowledge that Brianna needs a lot of attention. And then you can do a better job at recognizing when you two are giving all attention to Brianna and not enough to Penelope. It's constructive to have those conversations, even if they're difficult, in my opinion. Exactly. He wasn't saying he didn't love Brianna. My second child is autistic. My elder child is easy to care for and placid. If we'd had our autistic child first, I don't think we'd have had a second. It doesn't mean I don't love both of them immensely and equally. It just means that I recognize that my second child's high level of needs would have meant having another child was not feasible. 